Hi guys, it's Gav here from dancepalette.tv. Thanks for joining me as always, and I'm really excited. In today's video, I'm being joined by Christopher from Ocopedia. I can't wait to speak some stats and find out more about him. So thanks for joining the show today, Christopher. How are you? I'm doing well, Gav. Thanks for having me on the show. You're welcome, any time. I just, I just can't wait to delve a bit more into this. But I think before we go into the stats, it would be great to find out uh, a bit more about you. So how did you get into dance in the first place? Well, it wasn't until I was 23 years old that I first got interested in darts. And I, I suppose I have a, a YouTube recommendation algorithm to thank for <laughs> my interest in darts because it was completely... Uh, random that I happened to click on a video of Michael Van Michael McCarwin throwing 17 perfect darts at the 2012 World Championship. Oh wow, yeah, I remember that. And having watched that for the first time, you know, with the crowd going crazy when MVG hits the first <laughs> nine dart or MVG's reaction, uh, it was just something that I found really exciting. And because of my past interest in sports statistics, where I had done some stats for the local basketball team when I was in high school. Yeah. I've always been sort of interested in the analytic, analytical as, aspect of, uh, of, of sports, and darts always seemed to lend itself very well to a, a, a statistical perspective. Yeah. Just because, it, it, in, in one respect, either the... Uh, the dart is either in the treble 20 or it's not. Yeah. And you, 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 you can measure that very accurately. And it's, uh, uh, you know, ever since I watched that, that video of MVG two years ago, it's just uh, normally my obsessions only last for a couple of weeks, but this one has endured. And uh, two years on, I'm still finding darts as fascinating and as, and as fun to watch as I always have. And your stats um, also seem to be more fascinating as well, some of them that you, you put out. So do you play, do you play darts at, um, yourself and do you play at a good level now or, or is it just more of a stat side of things? Well, as soon as I started watching darts, I knew I, 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 was, I was asking my parents, do you have a dartboard somewhere <laughs> in the house? And so there it is. There it is, yes. That's, that's my dad's old 1980s, uh, AccuDart windmill board, and it's uh, as you can see, I've got a, a a fair few holes in the wall <laughs> from my uh, my first attempts at playing darts, and uh, you know, having having thrown myself into it uh, before before I knew what a surround was. Yeah, that that, that that's how that came about. But uh, I practice every day. I'd like to think I'm at a decent level now, where uh, if I play a couple legs of five or one, I'm usually averaging. 50, 60. Oh, brilliant. Uh, yeah, that is a good level, isn't it? Well, uh, it, it's been difficult to try to find a steel tip league around uh, where I live. Because most in, 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 in my part of uh, the U.S., most of the, uh, most of the darts played are soft, soft tip. Soft tip, yeah. And, and anyway, because I'll have, uh, I also have a lot of uh, musical commitments. So I'm in a rehearsal every a couple times a week. It right. makes it difficult to commit to a particular night of the week to play in a darts league. So, yeah. But mostly it's just me uh, in the basement throwing darts at my dad's old board and uh, you know just trying to get get a little better every day. As long as you enjoy it, I, I, that's what I say every day. As long as you enjoy it, it doesn't matter, does it? You know, like I say, I'm all over the place, but I love it. I love everything about it. So just I just go with it. Really, it's yeah. Um, I mean, even it's if you fun. don't have. A, um, even if you don't have a friend nearby who's uh, as enthusiastic about darts as you are, the great thing about darts is um, it's one of those sports where you don't need an opponent. Yeah. You can um, you can practice and get better um, just playing against yourself or playing against a computer. Yeah. It's fantastic. So obviously that was the next question. I was going to say about darts, where you stay in different things. Obviously. There, there is, but it's mainly soft tip, as you just covered. So, because I spoke to another guy recently in the states, and his his is all soft tip where he lives, and he's not far from like Las Vegas and that. But he was saying that when he plays steel tip, he has to travel nearly twenty mile to go to the league once a week. That's like the nearest place if he want to have a game, and that's like obviously in England here. You know, I could go. I've got ten pubs surrounding me that have all got darts. You know, steel tip leagues. Um, if we want to have a game, it's such a difference, isn't it? 
Yeah, the, 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 there's also the aspect of um, where I grew up, it's a bit more of an uh, upper class area. And most of the people in uh, the, the town where I grew up uh, were inclined to play golf on the weekends right. or, or after work rather than play darts. Yeah. Uh, just because there are so many golf courses uh, in, in my area. Uh, it, it took until I was, you know, 23 years old and surfing the internet <laughs> to find out about darts. My parents, crazy. you know, had, hadn't played darts in, in decades. Um, and it just was never, never a part of my childhood or, you know, even... My parents, they just, they just never played darts. I never knew someone who played darts. Uh, it was, uh, it, it, it seemed like a completely new discovery to me when I came across it a couple of years ago. Yeah, it's good, because I think they're coming out to, is it Las Vegas they're coming out to this year, aren't they? Are they doing that, bringing that back with Desert One, aren't they? Oh, yeah, absolutely, and I, I'd love to go out to Vegas myself. Uh, there's, uh, it might, might, might be a little tricky, because I'm a good... Uh, it's a big country. I, I live three thousand miles away from Vegas. Wow. Well, may, may, maybe uh, maybe one of these years I'll, I'll go down there. Maybe see if I can uh, get a crack at uh, appearing on TV. I'm not there yet. But, uh, <laughs> that is where I'd love. That is one place I've always said I want to go. I want to go to Vegas, but you know I'd love to have a flutter as well. But I said to my wife I'd probably come back with without that the house would be gone, the cars and everything. I'd end up in the casino yeah. now. Yeah, I, I, I love I, a flutter. It, it, as, as much as I love, uh, as much as I love to play poker, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't trust myself with a, a couple hundred bucks at a, at a table in Vegas. No, I wouldn't either. It would be, it would be absolutely lethal for me. Well, let's <laughs> let, let's actually go on to so the stats with the darts. How did you get into that? And I know that you obviously worked closely with Burton as well, didn't you? Absolutely. Uh, Burton uh, was sort of the the model for a statistician in darts. Um, he's been involved in this area for many years before before I showed up. Yeah. And, you know, every tournament he's giving you the updated order of merit, the pro tour order of merit, the, the, the standings for the match play. It's just a great service to, to darts fans out there that he is such an authoritative uh, statistician yeah. uh, in arts, and it's been, uh, I've been fortunate to work with him and uh, to, to, to learn a lot uh, from him. Uh, but it was when I started writing for Darts Weekly magazine, which was um, Alex Moss's uh, weekly magazine, which lasted for about a year and a half, uh, that I started writing about darts. Yeah. And transferring some of those statistics into a match of the week or a profile of a tournament and so including them in like your write-ups and everything as well starting adding all your stats and that in rather than just like a lot of people just do write-ups but people love to see the stats alongside them don't they it, it, yeah exactly uh it really enhanced uh uh, a, a, a column that I would write to be able to put a, a, a particular player's performance yes. in perspective, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the, 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 the stats that he, that he produced in a, in a given match. And as, as time went on, having, a st having stats from a particular match or a particular tournament was fine enough, but what always interested me was Okay, if I know that a player has a particular average over ten legs, yeah, what is his average going to be over ten thousand legs? Wow. Or what is his doubles percentage going to be over ten thousand legs? And so it takes a little bit of work to get at uh, <laughs> I think it does. statistics for that length of time, but that's sort of the next level you can go to to sort of compare a player's performance on any given day with what you can expect from him in the long run. Wow, it's just... So, are these, um, obviously, you, have you had to build algorithms to do this and your own software to do some of these crazy stats that, that you're, you're producing out at the moment? 
Fortunately, I haven't had to uh, come up with any new software. Right. Uh, it, it, there is a bit of coding involved because when I started gathering stats, it was really just a matter of watching videos yeah. and, you know, taking, you know, writing things down on a, on, on a notepad. <laughs> on the notepad, yeah. And as uh, my commitment to darts got a bit more in depth, I became more and more frustrated with the amount of time and effort that that, that, that took. Yeah. So that necessitated writing some code to uh, sort of harvest the data from uh, from a website or from an HTML page yeah. to sort of process it into a usable form where I wasn't just doing the manual labor of taking down the stats. I could just um, come up with, with an idea of what I wanted and with the stats already in place having been pulled from a particular website, yeah. I could, you know, just analyze them from there and, you know, make a better use of my time. Wow. So do you keep looking at, um, is there new stats that you keep bringing out? Is there always new things that you think, oh, I wonder this or I wonder that, and, and you keep adding? Because uh, I can imagine it, like you say, with it being darts, and it must just be endless. What is the, actually, while we're on it, what is the most fascinating stats or, or you know, that you've found since you've been doing it? Or your favourite, favourite ones? Well, I, I tell you what, because I... Um... I'm, I'm very fortunate to have uh, a bit of support from the PDC who've uh, taken me on to work as their statistical analyst. Yes, I heard that. Wow. Congratulations so, on that. Thank you. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's fantastic to have that sort of support where if I have a sort of, if I have some curiosity about darts or I've been asked a question by a fan that I don't know the answer to, uh, I can do a bit of research into it and report my findings on it to the wow. modern world. And uh, uh, the, the, the PDC have been uh, very gracious in using their platforms to uh, bring some of that, uh, that research out to, to more people. Um, and as far as some of the findings... Um, just in, in, in processing some of the larger amounts of, of data over yeah. the past uh, 12 months or so, that has sort of given me an idea uh, in, 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 on the one sense, you know, if, if you were to throw a million darts at a treble 20, uh, it, or I mean, if, uh, if, if a professional were to throw a million I darts... Gonna, if I was, there'd only be a few in there, that'd make your job easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you wouldn't see too many at uh, treble twenties out of those million darts. You get somebody like Anderson and that, it might be a bit different. Bloody yeah. For, 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 a, for a professional, you know, throwing a million darts at a treble twenty, I wanted to know, for instance, what the average score per dart would be. Yeah. And it turns out, for a professional throwing a, a dart at a treble twenty, the average score is about thirty-four. Uh, that's you know, that's sort of the raw material uh, on which I'm building my uh, my analysis, and so one of the interesting things I found is that the second treble that a player hits in a visit when he's throwing uh, three darts at a treble twenty, yeah. it's in the largest boost in as far as reaching a double and winning a leg. Uh, that's on the second treble, is it, you say? On the second treble. Wow. The largest, that's sort of the, the, the biggest bang for the buck he's going to get. Obviously, the third treble gives him a, a bigger, um, gives, gives him, you know... An, a bigger a, score, even, but... Yeah, you're right, and, 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 and even a greater likelihood of winning the leg. But it's the jump from the first treble to the second treble, which gives a player the biggest possible... Um, Increase per dart. Wow, and that's incredible. It's not it's not exactly intuitive as to why that would be, and it, it took a little bit of uh, thinking about this to try to puzzle out why it is. And how many hours do you spend thinking about? Oh, oh sorry, I just had to get that in while you're saying that about like too many, Gav. Yeah. Uh, wow, it's been, uh, I, I, it's, uh, it's it's really been an obsession for the past two years. You know, it's amazing. If I have to if I have a spare minute to look at something like this, I will go ahead and, and spend it, you know, uh, 
trawling through my 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 uh, my data. Oh, it's just it, 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 needless to say, uh, it's been it's sort of cannibalized my social life, <laughs> but uh, it, it all, all for a good purpose in uh, in in my view. It's just... But uh, as 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 to why that would be, why that second treble is so important, I think one of the reasons is that uh, because. Because the uh, because of the how you throw darts in multiples of three, yeah, um, it's much to your advantage uh, to throw a. It, you're going to have a much bigger advantage to throw a twelve darter rather than a thirteen darter, whereas throwing a thirteen darter versus a fourteen darter is not a big not a big improvement because you're doing it in the same visit. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you need that extra visit to the board, don't you? Exactly, and. So I think one of the reasons why is that uh, if you throw a, a, a 100, uh, if you keep throwing 100s in a leg, that sets you up to, say, leave 101 with 12 darts. Yeah. And that gives your average professional less than a 50% chance of, give, uh, of checking out uh, in that fifth visit for a 15 darter. But if you start a visit with a 140, that puts... The possibility of a twelve darter much more in play. Yes, and the one forty uh, making the twelve darter possible or much more likely is, I think, one of the reasons why uh, that second treble is so important. And when you think about the, the uh, a one eighty, yeah, it, you know, you, you'd never want to not throw a one eighty. Yeah, but at best. A 180 is going to uh, set you up for a nine a nine dart attempt, yeah. but even of nine dart attempts, less than two percent of all nine darters attempted are actually checked out for uh, a nine darter in, in a leg one and three visits, and few players will ever need to throw a nine darter to. Uh, Win a leg where a player is likely to throw a twelve darter. For instance. Yeah. So that one forty, that second treble that a player is hit, is so puts the tw- puts the twelve darter much more in view. Yeah. And gives him a much greater chance of winning a leg than he would have had if he's just throwing one hundred ninety. Yeah, because then, like I say, he needs the thirteen darter, which means he then needs the fifth visit to the board with the three darts, doesn't he? What a lot of the times you don't get right. if you're starting second. Do it. Well, I'll take, I'm no good at stats, but I take it I'm on the the right right line here, and I. A- absolutely, uh, you know, making your se- if, if 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 you're throwing fifteen darters rather than twelve darters, you're making yourself vulnerable to. Uh, 15 dart holds to throw and 12 dart breaks. Yeah. Whereas if, if you can throw a if you can throw a 12 darter, uh, you are going to you're going to be losing less than 10 percent of legs in the long run. Wow. You know, if, if, if if you can keep pumping out 140s, leaving um, leaving 81 and 85 for a, for a 12 darter. Uh, you know that's that's been the key to a player like MVG success and yeah. to rough process too. Can I just ask one other thing while we're on this? What are just out of interest? How many players go on? What are the, the stats for a player that starts with a one eighty and then goes on to lose that leg? That must be must be quite low, isn't it? It is quite low. Um, I don't have the number for you at the moment. Yeah, but it's. I did look at this at, at, at one point in time, and I think the number. Um, I think players who, who throw a 180 uh, to start the leg have about an, uh, a 180 to start the leg when they're throwing first. Yeah. They have about an 80% chance of winning the leg. And uh, what about second? 60? Right. But it, that, that's a, I believe that's about it. When they're throwing, uh, when, they're, when they're working against the throw and they throw an, uh, they hit a 180 with the first visit. It's about, I believe it's about 55, 60% winning the leg. So yeah. it makes you the favorite to win the leg, even if you're throwing, throwing uh, second. Throwing second. Yeah, I did wonder that stat when I look at it, because the amount of times that um, 
that's happened. You know, when somebody's got the legs um, or, or go up and then the, the, the player just throws second, then hits a 180 and then go on to nick it back. It, I thought it was around sort of... Uh, that was just a guess. I'm like I say, I'm no good with stats at all. So is this something then, um, Christopher? Or is, is there some more stats that you can explain? I'm loving all this because, like I say, I'm, I, I love all the figures and that behind it. And, and seeing some of your stuff on Twitter, I'm like, sometimes I open them up and you put something, like I remember over at, um, at the PDC uh, at Christmas, and you put somewhere exactly where all the darts have been and that, it was just like, I said to my wife, I said, I can't believe some of these stats, it's madness. Oh, well, yeah, after the World Championships, I put out a, a, an image. Yes, that was the one. And all of the, it was about 39,000 It was the one. Years. In, in the world championship and where they happen to land on the Madness. board. That, that was really just sort of a, 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 a curiosity thing to me, you know, just, just to figure out of all the darts thrown in, in a, um, in a professional match, how many of them are aimed at the treble 20 versus the doubles or, or versus the singles. And that was, that was just sort of something that, uh, you know, I, I don't think, uh, I don't think people had seen that before. No, and, definitely not. You know, get, getting a getting a sense of uh, what the actual distribution around the dartboard looks like in in, in five hundred one. Uh, I, I I think I, I thought people would find would find interesting, and, I, and, and I'm glad that they have. Yeah, I uh, think so. It's brilliant. Is that something that you're going to be doing with images a lot more, or is that a sort of one off sort of thing? Well, I'm always trying to experiment with different ways to present the data. Because in, I can make a, a, a very long list of players or a table of stats, but it's not very visually appealing. No. Uh, so it's always, it's, it's always a bit of a challenge to sort of come up with an, uh, a new way to present numbers that maybe people aren't used to seeing. Yes. It, it, it gives them a better sense of... Uh, well, you just see it, don't you? It's all visually. You can actually, like, when you put that image out, it's like, wow. It, it, they say that paintings, I don't know, it's probably the same, but paintings speak a million words. Or Do you know what I mean? It shows so much in that clip. Whereas, like you say, sometimes people go to these things and they see all the stats and numbers and they just, if they're not like that, they can't grasp it or can't be bothered to read it. But everybody can relate to that, I think. I think that's... Uh, Absolutely, I, I, uh, you know, and I'm I'm the number one offender when it comes to uh, putting out e enormous quantities of numbers uh, in ways that people aren't exactly inclined to understand. <laughs> you know, it, it, it just happens to be the way I work. Yeah, and uh, it it's been a bit of a challenge to for me to sort of adapt to um, you know the, the millions of fans out there who who see it who see it a, 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 a different way. Yeah, and. I, uh, you know, I have to get better at that because, you know, n now with a little bit more of the fans' uh, eyes on me for 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 particular questions they have about statistics. But you're like a celebrity. You are. Everybody knows Wikipedia, or or do you know what I mean? You are. Everybody speaks about you. Well, it, 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 it's it's really it's really strange to think of myself having a sort of a, 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 a double life as a as a dart statistician over in the UK and just having a boring <laughs> job in the US. Uh, but it's uh, you know it um, I, I, I I do a bit of writing, which you know to read uh, a thousand words of um, statistical analysis. That's not for everyone. I totally understand that. You know, it, it, it even uh, my, my own writing. Uh, is uh, uh, you know it, it can get a little it can get a little <laughs> tough to plow through at times, but uh, you, you're you're absolutely right that um, you know the visuals just uh, make the stats speak so much louder. Yeah, and it's something that thanks to um, help from the team at the PDC, I can uh, you know explore in a little bit more uh, detail nowadays. So is this something that you think you'll you'll always do now? Obviously, you said that you you know doing stuff with the PDC. Is this something that you'll you'll always do now? Do you think? I would think so. I mean, uh, I I've, I've invested so much time in it over the past two years that uh, I think it would be difficult for me to just drop it and uh, move on to something else. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I've always had an interest in, 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 in sports statistics. And uh, if, as, as long as there's a question out there like, uh, you know, which is the better double to throw for or which treble has the, the, the highest accuracy percentage, it's something that I'm going to want to know. And, you know, if it takes me a couple of weeks to gather all the, the data I need to, to answer that question. You'll so do it. I'm yeah. Happy to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Because I know that Burton's obviously moved over to the UK now, hasn't he? He has. Is this... and, I'm, uh, I, and I'm very jealous of him. <laughs> I'd, love, I'd love to move over there, you know, for, for the darts and for the... Uh, uh, for the brass band scene, uh, you know, I I, I, uh, I play some brass instruments. Oh, excellent! So I, I, I'd love to uh, I'd love to move over there, but uh, I'd uh, not, uh, maybe maybe some point in the future. Not not right now, but uh, it's a bit of a dream for me. Yeah, I think. But then, son, I, I've always liked to go to. I suppose you know, wherever you live, you always want to go somewhere else, don't you? But like I say, it oh, is sure. it is a huge it is a huge buzz. Um, I've been to a few of the events and different things, and hopefully it's something that you'll... I'm sure you will get to experience. I expect the PDC might fly you over, aren't they? Some all-inclusive big trip for the year for all the work that you do. Oh, I... I they, 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 uh, they, they compensate me well enough right now. I, I couldn't, you know, I, <laughs> I wouldn't dare to think that they would, uh, they would, they would think of me like that. I no, mean, I'm only t- they, I'm they, teasing. Want, let me just say, if they want to do that, I have no objection. <laughs> certainly don't expect them. To. No, I know. But what you're doing is like, like for the fans and for people like me that have got it is it is it is just brilliant. It really, really is. So, um, just before we wrap the interview up, can I, you know, who are your favourite dart players? Just out of interest. Well, I'll always be sort of indebted to Michael Vaccaroen for getting me interested in the darts. Yeah. It was that video, of seventeen perfect darts, and you know. About a month after I started watching darts, he throws 18 perfect darts at the at the UK Open oh, no. in 2016. I'll always be sort of um, uh, I'll always be a fan of his just just for that reason. But as I got to watch darts in a bit more depth, uh, another player I really enjoy watching is is Joe Cullen. Yeah, uh, watching him develop his talent because it's obviously. A fantastic talent he has. Yeah, um, it's just getting it out, yeah. isn't it, on a more regular basis yeah. on TV, isn't it? A- absolutely. At the moment, you know, a, a very exciting, volatile player to watch. Yeah. But you ne- you're never quite sure if he's going to put up a, a 75 average or 110. Well, yeah, it's so up and down, isn't it? There's no a lot. You get some players that are sort of very similar all the time, but it's just. It's like he went out really early in the worlds as well. Did, did he go out in the first round in the end? Didn't he? Yeah, he he uh, missed uh, missed two match darts to beat Jermaine Watamino. That's it. Yeah, that was right. He got back into it and then ended up losing, didn't he? Yeah, it's um, it, uh, it, it, he, it, uh, it, it's strange to think that he's been uh, he's been in the world championships for I believe seven seven or eight years now. Yeah, and his. He's he's won once, and that came against Corey Cabby in a fantastic <laughs> game. Let's let's not be uh, let let's not kid ourselves. No. you know that was a, a brilliant match, and you know I'm a huge Cabby was, fan. I love Cabby. Yeah, there, there, there was a particular checkout in that match where Joe Cullen throws a dart that bounces out. He's he's going for 97, bounce out triple 19, tops, and he wow. wins the leg, and he goes on to win the match. You know. Brilliant match, but then it, it, it all fall, falls apart in the next match against Adrian Lewis. So yeah, it's just mad. I would, I would just, I would love to see him become uh, sort of the next star because I think he has the potential. And you know, I, I'll also have that sympathy for him. We 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 start out in the uh, um, in the same sort of career in the um, in the postal world, right? Uh, but you know, w- watching. Uh, Watching Joe is, you know, he's one of the most fun players to watch. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I wish him all the best. And I'm going to be following darts for many years, so I, I hope to see a lot more of him. Fantastic. Yeah, like I say, so, there's so many decent players out there that I always look at, and they've got potential. And and I spoke to Chris Mason about it, which was really interesting, and he said that, that was like Jamie Lewis this year in the world. Unbelievable darts, like I'd never seen before. But when I spoke to Chris, it's like, 
they do play like this on the floor. It's just that a lot of us only get to see them on the telly. A lot of these players on the floor, Dennis Ovens, another one, years ago, they reckon Dennis Ovens was one of the best floor players there was, which is why he had a good ranking, but he never really brought it to the telly. And I suppose it's just one of those things. Some players maybe, I don't know, but not saying they can't handle it, but it's it's the occasion, isn't it? Yeah, well, and, and also thanks to the uh, the PDC's partnership with Dark Connect, we're also seeing just how good some of the floor, floor players, are. players are on the floor. And, you know, just having, having produced some lists of um, statistics, you're finding out that there are dozens and dozens of players who can put up a 100 average and regularly, regularly do 90s. We've got Stuart Kellett at the top of yep. a lot of the rankings. We've got John Goldie at the top of a lot yep. of the rankings. You know, these, these guys are just killing it on the, on, on the floor. And, you know, the, the biggest hurdle for a dart player is just, you know, bringing the game that you're accustomed to in silence in an arena in, uh, in, 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 in an arena that's set up for, uh, for floor events. Yeah. Uh, transferring that to a match in which you've got 3,000 fans uh, chanting stand up if you love the darts <laughs> behind you. And uh, it, it's, it's a huge uh, leap of faith for any player. It was to... quite funny, actually, while you're on that. I also see a tweet somewhere the other day, and I think it was from an American or, or somewhere, but they'd said that um, some of the floor players that have been telling me for years that they hit 100 averages on a regular basis, now that the darts connects out, they're not doing so. That's obviously, do you not? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've always wondered about that. Maybe just, you know, for... for, for... The, the previous history of, uh, of uh, the players' championship events, it was all sort of a, um, a, the, the players' secret how well they exactly. played on, on any given day. And now, it's... to some extent, they have to be accountable to their fans for how well they play and exactly. uh, what, what the results are. It's out there for the uh, world to see now, isn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, for, for some players, you know, obviously for... for um, for MVG, that's just and for Rob Cross and for Corey Cadby, that's nothing more than an, uh, an encouragement for them yeah. to, to to play even better. But if you're just starting out in your career and you're uh, uh, you're you're a 20 year old aspiring professional darts player, I can see how that would be pretty difficult for you. You know, you once uh, once that data hits Dart Connect, it, it never goes away. Everyone no. knows how it's how, there. How you yeah. I think it's brilliant. I, I love it. Well, listen, Christopher, is, is there anywhere where like your stats and that and all, all the things like the images and that are all mainly put up through Twitter, aren't they? And, and is there anywhere else? Well, if, if, if anyone uh, if anyone finds my stats interesting, they can they can follow me at, at Occupedia, O-C-H-E-P-E-D-I-A. I'll be and, putting that in the details as well. And uh, uh, watch the, 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 the PDC's website because a lot of my uh, statistical analyses usually... Uh, usually make their way over there. Fantastic. Well, listen, Christopher, I'm going to um, end the video now. We're just over 30 minutes, so it's, it's been absolutely awesome. But I wonder, could there's so many questions I want. I think I could be on air, I don't know, for about another five hours asking. Is, could, could we maybe do another video another day and cover a lot of the other stats? Because I'm sure there'll be so many people that are really going to find this interesting. And I think I'm also going to put a, a note out for... Um, people that want to ask you questions and maybe we can cover them in another video anytime you want Gav it would be a pleasure to come back on the show you know it's it, ha having watched your, uh, your 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 channel grow over the past couple of months has been you know just fantastic you've got everything you need to have the you know be the best in the business at what you do so Anytime you want, I'd be pleased to be a guest. Thank you. Listen, thank you so, so much for coming on today, Christopher. So, guys, I've got Christopher's details here. Check that out. And you can find him um, on Twitter as well, as he just mentioned. Um, as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Massive thank you to Christopher. Um, if you do like it, uh, please leave a like. Turn on the notifications and hit that subscribe button. That's it for this video, guys. I'll catch you next time. Bye.